Hi, I'm Dr Mel Fraser. I'm a soil scientist with Rural Solutions South Australia. I'm here at the Cadgy site of the New Horizons program. It's one of three sites that have been established in South Australia this year to demonstrate what we can achieve when we overcome the issues with subsoil constraints. About 40% of South Australia's broadacre agricultural land is affected by subsoil constraints that can affect productivity. What we're trying to do is really increase the productivity that we get from a grain perspective by unlocking the nutrient and moisture in the top 50 centimetres of the profile. Previous research that's trialled the addition of clay and organic matter and fertiliser has shown that we can increase productivity between 20 and 200 per cent with an average of 70 per cent increase in, in productivity gains. New Horizons is an initiative of primary industries and regions in South Australia, greatly improving soil productivity for our farmers. As part of the State Government's Premium Food and Wine from our Clean Environment Priority, the program seeks to understand soil constraints that limit productivity. The potential benefits of the program are enormous. The new modification practices adopted in the program are already demonstrating that we can double yield. The program aims to deliver an increase in agricultural productivity of $800 million a year. It will also provide long-term storage of carbon and significantly reduce soil erosion. We've been farming in South Australia for up to 100 years now and over that time we've tried to make the best of those very infertile and poorly structured soils and try and get productive farming systems despite those soils. This is probably the first trial where we've put treatments to address all the constraints together so that we can evaluate them side by side. What is our ideal soil type? What's, what's going to be give us the best return for our grower input dollar and if we've got a soil like this how far away from the ideal is it and what can we do to make it better to get closer to that ideal soil type. The wheat crop that I'm uh, positioned in was planted in mid-May into what was pretty dry conditions at the time. You can see that the establishment in this particular treatment has been uh, very uniform uh, crop growth throughout the plot is uh, a, a nice height. We've got uh, quite large uh, heads on all of these um, plants through here. And we can see that the, the biomass, the, the bulk in, uh, in the crop is, is quite good and we've almost got row closure in between uh, the rows of wheat as well. We can see here that the root growth has uh, been quite compacted uh, in the top 10 centimetres. It's quite prolific right here. You can see that it's very sandy and the sand uh, comes away from the roots really easily. Where we've applied the clay and the hay treatments, you can see that that soil is really um, being held up quite well by the roots. We can see the roots have actually travelled down and are, have penetrated into those clay pits, so we know that they're accessing more nutrients and, and moisture. Some of these intervention processes have resulted in quite spectacular increases in the productivity of the wheat that we've put on those field trials this year. So far we've seen some spectacular increases in the productivity of the wheat growing on these sites. Of course the, the payoff is at harvest. What I've observed on the trial site has been pretty phenomenal, especially in a year when we're 100 mils down on last year in rainfall and 130 down on our average and for it to hang on in that white, gutless, non-wetting sand has been amazing. I really encourage uh, other farmers in the district uh, with the same sort of issues and soil types to really get on board on this uh, trial site and other trial sites that are similar because I think the benefits in the long term will be to their bottom line and that's all we're trying to achieve in farming. Yield responses have been from probably 40% to 100% um, with the same inputs, same rotation, um, which to me is, from a manager's point of view, is a no-brainer. We, 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 we have to be doing this. We can't ignore that, ignore that uh, impact because it's substantial, e even with the cost of the operation. People that, are, that have poor water holding capacity soils um, they really need to be addressing that because that's the driver for yield. 
These sorts of trials are critical to improving the production and productivity of sheep and beef production and of cropping. So there's a huge amount of dollars that are potentially uh, to, to be gained here if we can really crack this and get it right. Get the right combination of clay, depth of uh, incorporation, getting nutrients down into the soil and those sorts of things. If we get that right, we believe that through this, through this particular series of trials there could be doubling of yields. Now that's really quite dramatic. That means huge dollars for this region and for the state, so certainly worth investing some money into. A range of partners have been working collaboratively to deliver the objectives of the New Horizons program. We need everybody to get on board with the South Australian government, industry, farming systems groups and universities to deliver the outcomes of the program as quickly as possible.